When we cultured phytoplankton in our aquaculture facility, we literally had zero knowledge when we started of how to grow, harvest, or even feed it to our zooplankton. As I've mentioned before, there's a ton of information out there that you can get for free. However, a lot of that information is incomplete and did not explain everything fully. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're thinking about culturing your own phytoplankton for your reef tank, if you're gonna culture zooplankton or for your breeding projects, you need to know a few vital things or you will not be successful. And I can't stress enough that you can unknowingly culture a bad bacteria that can wipe out your entire reef tank. On the breeding front, your fry will not develop properly, if at all, if the proper precautions are not taken. If you want all the information on how we successfully grew our phytoplankton, you can purchase the full online course for $19. I'll leave a link to the course in this video's description. In the meantime, here are five essentials that you need to know about culturing phytoplankton. One, plastic bottles are not a good culturing vessel. They contain too many harmful chemicals to count, so when you add light to the phytoplankton, which it needs in order to grow, you are accidentally inducing photodegradation to your culturing vessels. You can use vessels like these, since they do not contain BPAs or any other harmful chemicals, but you wanna be careful and ensure that the light is not breaking them down over time. This was a tricky factor for us, but once we noticed any sign of the vessels breaking down, we disposed of it. So in our course, we recommend that you use glass culture vessels as the light has no effect on it. They do make glass carboys like the BPA-free ones that we used, so if you need to scale to a larger vessel, then I recommend looking into these. Just be really careful when handling them as they are pretty heavy. Two, keeping a daily grow out log is essential to your success. This is called a seshi meter. It is literally a plastic ruler with a black O on the bottom of it. This is what we use on a daily basis in order to read the density of our phytoplankton cultures. The density of the culture will tell you what phase of growth that it is in. This is essential for determining a number of factors, including if it's growing at an acceptable rate, if it's ready to split, ready to harvest, or if it's crashing. I'm sure that there are other devices out there, but for a hobbyist or someone who is just starting out, this thing is an essential tool for culturing phytoplankton from my experience. Three, just like our meals that contain different types of nutrients, each species of phytoplankton contains essential nutrients and vitamins. Finding the right combination for the corals, filter feeders, zooplankton, etc. that will consume it is vital. Do your research and ensure that your phytoplankton blend is nutritionally complete for what you are feeding it to. Four, lab-grade ethanol mixed with water is your new best friend. In order to prevent a culture crash or zooplankton contamination, this stuff is essential. Also, it evaporates pretty quickly, but before you use it on any equipment, the smell of the ethanol needs to be undetected. Otherwise, it is still on the equipment and will not allow for any type of growth to occur involving that equipment. Five, you should not eat this stuff intentionally or on accident. Look, it happens, but you need to try your best to avoid it. I lost my voice for two weeks after accidentally ingesting some nanocalorpsis. Not a good time. So how did that happen? Well, the larger vessels can be heavy, so to avoid any injury from lifting it, we were using a mouth siphon technique, and let's just say that you should definitely not do that just try to avoid ingesting it in general. It's really important to my overall goal for Aquaparel to make the most positive impact as I possibly can by sharing as much helpful information as I possibly can. I have a degree in marketing, not in biology. Anyone with a passion or a desire to make a positive impact either through aquaculture or biofuel can do it too. That's why I'm creating a bunch of content about this stuff and that's why we created the online course. So if you're seriously considering culturing phytoplankton for any application, consider checking out our online course. I will leave a link to it in this video's description.